session of this first in the afternoon. Correctly. Uh, also about variations, in this case a list-like approach to encode on the type level. Excuse me. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to talk, talk to you about this uh, modular ray fiber matching, which in one sentence is our variation of data type a la carte which uses the list of functors instead of one functor, and the, the, the data type we built will be processed by a list of algebras rather than one algebra. And it turns out that actually our work seems to be very relevant, so it's, it, it may, it's another variation to the variations. And, okay, so uh, as when the data type of colors, as we, as we know, is, the, uh, is considered by many people to be a, a one of the best solutions to, to the expression problem. So what more can we offer on top of that. So maybe these two things. So firstly, uh, in, in our framework, so this, uh, the operations or the algebras on the data types are first class, which can be reused, which can be overridden and uh, uh, extended. And also, we, uh, we, we, have, we have a way to do subtyping, which we believe to be, to be more flexible, which I'm going to show you later. Okay, but anyway, this is uh, well, so to, to start with, with what we did. So uh, this is the uh, typical two-level or so sorry, two level data, data type construction where you supply a base, uh, uh, a base functor before taking the fixed point. And it's the same thing written in GATT syntax. As you can see that uh, fixed, uh, this fix takes a functor and in the wraps an f of fix f to a fix f. And what we do here is simply to allow fix to take a list of functors. Instead of, one, instead of one function. And uh, this list is the recent uh, extension to, to Haskell data kinds, which uh, allows certain types to be limited to kinds. And now this in operator takes uh, fixed, uh, f of fixed fs to fixed fs, provided that f is an element of fs. And here this uh, lm fs is a witness that f occurs in fs. And if you are familiar with, the, with uh, dependent type programming, this is a standard rule that uh, here says that f is a member of a con f cons fs, and there says that if f is in, is in fs, the f is in g cons fs as well. Okay, so uh, it would be in con uh, so every time you use in, you are, you are supposed to supply a witness, and it would be difficult. It, it would be inconvenient if you have to type that yourself all the time. But luckily, in our applications, it's always usually always possible to uh, use a type class to infer the witness. And so uh, uh, we say f is in fs if there's if there's a, a function witness computing the witness uh, with computing the witness for you, and these two cases. Uh, corresponds to the two cases previously in, on the previous slides, right? So uh, now that we have the data type, we want to, uh, okay, again, now this, uh, so this, uh, this, then there's a smart constructor in, and which is in uh, after, uh, with the witness computed for you. Okay, so now that we have the uh, data type, we want to do something with it. And now that the data type is computed using, use, uh, is a fixed point of a list of functors, then it's natural to use a list of algebras to process them. So this algebras, this data type, is a list of functor indexed list of algebras. So in the base case, when the uh, list is empty, we denote that by a void. And if you have an F algebra and an FS algebra, you can, you can come put them together and get, get an F cons FS algebra. And, uh, so the witness, uh, uh, this witness of, L, uh, of the membership you saw just now also works as an index into the list of algebras. So we can define this function extract at, which given an index, extract the particular F algebra for you. And the, the, the definition is, is a simple indu induction on this uh, witness of elements, or membership. Okay, so uh, actually uh, we, uh, in our code, we actually use a, use a more slightly more general data type, which allows, allows you to uh, put functions which returns uh, something other than this A together. Uh, so we call that matches, so hence the name, uh, modular reliable matches. And uh, most of the operation I'm, going to, I'm talk, going to talk about just now actually are defined on matches rather than algebras. And having matches allows you to define a function uh, using general recursion. But however, for this talk, I'm going to go, go specialize everything to algebras only. So uh, then, okay, uh, this is how typically a fold is defined. 
having a data type uh, uh, defined uh, the, whose type is fixed F, you unwrap it and recursively apply flow to all these subcomponents before applying this algebra K. And then this is how we define an algebra. Instead of one algebra, we, had, we take a list of algebra. And similarly, you unwrap the data type, uh, apply flow to it uh, recursively to all the subcomponents. And here, instead of K, you uh, extract the corresponding F algebra from the list of algebras K. And uh, as you know, this uh, recalling that pose is the membership uh, witness, which also works as an index. And so extract that extract of pose of K gives you that F algebra. Right, so okay, I'm, I'm, I want to, I'm going to show you some examples of using this library and uh, following some previous where we basically talk about two kinds of, of uh, operations, transformations and queries. A transformation is a function which takes a fixed point of something to a fixed point of something else. And this, uh, this f and this prime may not, may not be the same. And a, a query is a function which takes a fixed point to something that's not defined using our fixed point operator. I'm going to start with the transformation. And uh, so this is one single simple transformation doing something stupid. So taking the, so the, the task is to, is that given a, an expression with variables, we want to go through the tree and change the name of every variable from x to underline x. And that's a simple transformation. And so assuming that we have these two, two functors, var and let, and uh, you know how to do renaming for var, and you can turn that into an algebra. You, you know, know how to do renaming for let, and you can turn that into an algebra. And you, put, you can put these two algebra together into a list. And uh, so then this function rename takes uh, a fixed point of y and let to a fixed point of y and let. Now, also, these two algebras must come in the same order as, the, as this list of algebras. And uh, also, this algebra must be given uh, uh, fixed. So it's not very flexible, actually. The style we command is instead to uh, start from a plain algebra, which, which does nothing, which gives you simply the, the identity transformation. And, uh, Rewrite relevant, re rewrite the entries. You uh, rewrite the relevant, re relevant entries. So uh, okay, so this is what we do. That uh, now that given an algebra, an, an FS algebra. If you know that F is an element in FS, so you can rewrite the corresponding entry to by uh, by you by a by a F algebra you specify. And uh, then all, again, override that is simply a. Uh, it's simply a induction on this uh, elam FFS. And then uh, here we, we have a, a smarter version of override, which also call override, and which in which, in, in which the witness is computed for you. And then you want to have something to start with. So this uh, ins, uh, OK, is uh, the is essentially a list of in, and uh, so I start with in here, in there, here, in there, there, here, etc. And so, uh, given in, so we know we, you can imagine a fold in is just an identity transformation. And uh, so, actually, this in can have a more general type, which I'm, to sh I'm going to, sh to, to show you later. But starting with this in, okay, now you can uh, define rename slightly differently. So, start with in, you rewrite the entry for let using uh, by uh, the algebra for, for let. And you rewrite the entry for var by this RNV, another algebra. So, then now the type of rename become, is, is something like this it takes a fixed point of S to a fixed point of fs, provided that var is in fs and let is in fs, with some other constraint I'm, going, I'm not going to show you. And uh, then, then uh, so the, the, the type of this is more flexible, because now if you extended, extended uh, the, your program with more, with more uh, functors, the same code still, still, still works. OK? And also now the order of the algebra doesn't have to, 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 to the algebra doesn't have to come in any particular order. Okay, now, uh, now another topic about subtyping. So uh, this is this sub fs is a witness that is a proof that uh, fs is a sublist of gs, uh, which as you know, uh, fs is a sublist of gs, provided that uh, every element in f is in gs. Okay, again this. Uh, Again, this witness can be computed uh, by, uh, by, by, by type classes. So the, the corresponding type class is written like this. 
Okay, now, uh, so if Fs is a sublist of Gs, then we, uh, uh, of course, so certainly fixed point of Fs can be lifted to a fixed point of Gs. Because it's the same tree, but now in type, in the, in the type we allow it to have more constructors. And how do you do that? Well, simply by just fold ins. But now this in is, uh, is still a list of in, but now the type of this is more general. It's actually an FS algebra whose carrier type is fixed point of GS. And so now, now, uh, the, now the ins, uh, the actual definition is something like this. So, uh, here, so now this uh, is not it's not uh, in here, in there, here, in there, there, here, so that anymore. So the position will be computed by uh, by, by 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 this code, which try to find for each f where it is in GS. Okay, and with that you can uh, lift data types. Now, uh, also uh, we can do something like that. So, of course, the, the given an GS algebra. If we know that GS, FS is a sublist of GS, then it, it can certainly be downcasted to an uh, FS algebra by removing uh, certain entries. This, then this submatch function also has a rather trivial definition everybody can do here. And so uh, then, okay, we, we, can, we can also prove uh, useful things uh, uh, like this. That, for example, uh, this sub sub says that if S, FS is a sublist of GS, then it is also a sublist of GCONS uh, G GS. And uh, the proof is, again, rather trivial. And, but with, uh, it, it will be hard to do if we, without this uh, witness pose. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm going to, to show you a larger example of uh, this, this thing at work. So uh, it's, uh, it's an example we, we found in some previous work, uh, which we adapted to our, to our framework. So the, uh, so assuming that you have an expression, uh, have a tree denoting expressions with uh, lambda with lambda abstraction application and variables, and uh, in certain very simple semantics, uh, if you have a term like this, and if if uh, it turns out that x does not occur free in E1, which means that this lambda abstraction is actually a, const a constant function, then you can simply, you can rewrite this to just E1. Okay. So the task is to write a function which takes uh, some expression like this and, uh, and perform this constant function elimination. And uh, you can imagine how to do that. It's not a very simple, a very difficult, difficult function to write. It can be defined as a fold over the tree, uh, but with one slight problem that uh, whenever you see application, you need to check whether x is in, is in the free variable of e. And uh, so, so na uh, na uh, a naive, naively written program would have to recompute the, the free variable every time, which you want to avoid. So one way to avoid that is to probably to uh, to go over the tree, the, to uh, scan the tree first uh, in another pass, and annotate every subtree with the free variables. But how do you do that? Uh, okay, so now uh, one one way to do that is to define another functor, which uh, which allows you to annotate this structure X with uh, something, some information of type A. Okay, now uh, if you have an FS algebra. Of course, the, you can convert that to a, another FS algebra, which computes the result, and together with a copy of the input tree, and that can be easily done. But however, you, you, uh, you see, one advantage of this framework is that the algebras are first class; they are, they are just a, they are just a data structure, so you can just you can go through it and do anything you want with them, including doing uh, modification, doing uh, operations like this. And then with this NO algebra thing now, uh, you can define a here. Okay, this function annotate, which takes uh, which takes an FS algebra, and uh, and a fixed point of FS, and it uh, basically applies FS algebra to every subtree, and but remain and adding NO nodes into the tree, remembering. Uh, Remembering the result for every subtree, so the type is some, uh, uh, so the type is something like this. So the input is a fixed point of FS, and which will be a sub uh, a sub list of GS. And what we demand from GS is that firstly it allows every every constructor out in FS, and secondly NOA is a member of GS. 
So it, it contains annotations, and that's it. Then this FSGS will, will be unified with other, other types later in the code. So, so then this is uh, essentially our implementation of uh, constant function elimination. So this F, F vars algebra is the function you use in, uh, to compute, it's, it's an algebra you use to compute free variables. And then you use that to annotate a tree. So the input tree is a tree um, which might not contain anno annotations. Then, however, the, after this stage, the, the trees are annotated. Then the CFE prime uh, performs constant function elimination using the <coughs> stored. And then you use, a, you use another pass to, to remove the, the, the annotation. Okay. So, but we haven't talked about how to do, uh, how to do, uh, how to compute Free variables, and that will be a query because it's a function for the uh, the, compu the function computing free variables with is uh, will be a function taking a fixed point of something to a list of free variables, which is not defined using our fixed point operator. So actually, it's uh, it's rather similar, almost the same. So, uh, but the only difference now is that the output type is not the fixed point anymore. So you cannot just use in to combine the results. So instead, you have to specify how to combine results from different subtrees. And uh, there must be a number of solutions to that. But the current the current solution we're doing now is to take advantage of this of the of the built-in uh, traversable actually foldable type. Uh, so uh, this, uh, it says that if uh, B is a monoid, this uh, library function fold map applies A to B to every, to every, sub -element, uh, to every substructure in, in F of A and uh, combine the result using the uh, monoid M append operator. So in particular, list is, uh, is, is a monoid. So then uh, again, we, we also encourage we also encourage people to write functions in this framework using uh, starting from a, a base a, a, the most basic query, which does nothing but returning the zero of the uh, monoid and rewrite the relevant entries. So this uh, this the most simple query algebra would be this query algebra, which uh, is essentially a list of fold maps instead of a list of ints. That's it, right? So, and uh, so this uh, empty query, which is uh, which is fold of query algebra, does nothing but returning the zero. And then you start from the query algebra, query, query algebra, and then define what to do for let and what to do for var, and uh, and that's it. So then, uh, if you have other constructors in 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 FS, then they are taken care of by the base case, which is appending. The, the, the free variables. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. So in summary, now uh, our, uh, our library modular variable patching, uh, modular rectifiable matching is an alternative to data table card and uh, where we use a list of functors and a list of algebras. So uh, the, then the, we think that the advantages are firstly, uh, we, uh, our algebras are first class. The matches are first class, which can be mani manipulated. And also we have a more, more, red, more flexible subtype relation. We can say that this list of algebras is a, is a subtype of, is a sublist of the other list of algebras. So just very quickly actually some. I think I have had some more time. Okay, then also this is how we denote that the output uh, list of algebra is, is smaller than the input algebra. In this case, the, we use the position. So this is an example where we remove lets from, uh, from the input expression. So we, not, we, uh, we simply say that if uh, the input is let f const, const something, then the output does not have that let. So, that's one our way to do that. And then actually, in the beginning, I tried to use that to model uh, uh, effect handling, uh, but then that, but then be, that that became a, a minor example in our in our paper. So that's all I'm going to talk about today. I understand that uh, these uh, maps are basically algebra homomorphism. Is it also possible to uh, pass the derived parameters top to the bottom instead of bottom up? Uh, 
also to run on this, this is the same uh, map. So is it possible with in this framework to say compute the depth of each node? Uh, with the algebra? I think so. I don't see any problem with that. Uh, I might just do uh, uh, say uh, const one, uh, uh, say a map const one and a scan, which which should be possible to define. I can try that. <laughs> have you compared the uh, performance of this approach to that of data types on the cards? Oh, we haven't. So actually, we uh, we we have we have, have some examples, but we, we we haven't we haven't tested the efficiency at all. The question was, is it the, how, how well does it scale? Is it possible to write the Haskell compiler in, in this, with this tool? And actually, in that case, efficiency will be an issue, and which, we have, which we haven't tried. So uh, I have to say, we, we, haven't, uh, we don't have any big scale examples so far, but that, that would be something uh, worth trying. Uh, 